Okay, lesson four, we're looking at solving exponential equations with a common base. So what's your goal today? Uh, I want you to be able to identify equations that can use the concept of exponents and using common base and then solve them appropriately. So fortunately for us today, all of the equations we're going to be dealing with can be solved with common base. And we're going to talk about what with the ones that can't be in the next lesson. So before you can go ahead and solve equations with common bases, the first thing you need to do is you need to be able to write numbers, different numbers, as a common base. So for example, the first one, let's go write as base 2. So for the first one here, let's look at something simple. Let's go with 8. So I know my final answer is going to be 2 to some exponent. You need to figure out 2 to what exponent gives you 8. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So it's 2 cubed. Okay. If I ask for 64, you know it's going to be base 2. That's what the question's asking. So 2 times 2 is 4. I'm holding up, I'm counting fingers when I'm doing this. So 2 times 2 is 4, so that's 2. Times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. So I've got six fingers up, so I multiplied 2 six times. Some of you are going to know this instantly, and, that, and that's fine, uh, but just providing a process. The trickier ones are the fractions. So what happens if I gave you 1 half um, to the negative, well, let's do it this way. Perhaps this will make more sense for you. 1 over 2 to the negative 1. Okay. Actually, drop the negative one. Let's just do one half. Making things more complicated than they have to be. You know it's got to be base two. You know that you already have a two in it. You just need it in the numerator. How do you do that? One half is the same as two to the negative one. What happens if I ask for one eighth and I want it in base two? Well, we know the answer is going to be two to some exponent. And if we look to the previous example, I know eight is simply 2 to the exponent 3. The only problem is my 8 is in my denominator. To move it to the or numerator, I would have to make it negative 3 instead. Okay. If I had 1 32nd, I know what I wanted in base 2. I know 32 is a multiple of 2, and I know that it is 5 times, so it must be negative 5. All right, and you need to be able to do this with multiple bases. So write as base, let's go with 5. Okay, so you got the, what I'll call the easier ones. So 125, you know it's going to be base 5. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125, so it's 5 cubed. If I have it as a fraction, 125th, you know the answer is going to be 5 to some exponent. We know the denominator, 25. Okay, is just 5 squared. Because it's in the denominator, moving it to the numerator would change the exponent to negative 2. So you can see why it's important that we're comfortable with our negative exponent laws. So there's our key there, being able to write different numbers in different bases. So what's a solve, what does it mean to solve an equation? Okay, what we need to do is we need to use our math skills to isolate the unknown. Or we can call it a variable as well. So you've done this many, 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 many times before. So I'm going to start with something going way back to grade 9. And we're going to just talk about the process. We talk about inverse operations. And you have to think of it in those terms. So the example I have here is 2x plus 4 equals 15. What are we trying to do? we're trying to isolate the variable. First thing we need to do is get rid of the 4. So inverse operation. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So we'll subtract 4 from both sides. And we end up with 2x equals 11. That inverse operation canceled those two terms out. We're still trying to isolate for x. So what's happening to the x? It's being multiplied. So then we're going to divide both sides by 2. That inverse operation cancels out those numbers. And we're left with x equals 
11 halves. Now that's a that's a linear equation. That's something you did back in grade nine, but the steps are still valid. We're talking about doing an inverse operation to isolate for a variable. So now when we go into the examples, it's very similar. The difficulty, the problem arises is that the bases we're dealing with our unknowns are in the exponents. So when we look at some of the examples, we'll start off with an easier one. Okay, 2x equals 64. So it's not trial and error. Okay, we already know it's defined for us. If we're going to solve this, I want everything to be in base 2. So I have 2 to the x equals, and because I know the homework today allows this, 64 must be able to be written as base 2. It can be. And 2 to the 6th is the same as 64. So, therefore, because the bases are the same, oops, because the bases are the same, we can now look at the exponents. So often teachers will have you write, and I'm going to have you write CE, therefore, and, and I'm only going to write this once, CE is equal to compare exponents because that's what we can do when they both share the same base. Compare exponents. So that's, I'm going to put that in a bubble. That's not going to be there every time. I'm just going to go, therefore, CE, which means I can simply say x equals 6, and I'm at my answer. This is the final answer. All right. So I'll do another simple one without the, uh, the extra work in there. Uh, let's do... 5x equals 125th. So again, your denominator, it's already stated this side, we're going to have to get it in base 5 because it's 5 to the exponent x. We can't change that base. So everything's going to have to be written in base 5. Can I do that? Well, 25 is the same as 5 squared. However, it's in the denominator. To move it up top, I'm going to have to go with a negative 2. So therefore, compare exponents because, again, we now have the same bases. So x equals negative 2. And fi it's final answer for us. All right. Moving into some of the more complicated ones. We can look at uh, 5x, number 3. 5 to the exponent, 2x plus 6 equals... 125. At least that's what I'm trying to write. So again, the base is defined because wherever the x is, there's the x in this expression. It's got to be base 5. So I know that's going to remain base 5. So 5 to the exponent 2x plus 6 equals. So that means this side must be able to be written as a base 5. It's going to be 5 cubed. We have the same bases. All right. So in that case, if the bases are the same, we can compare exponents. 2x plus 6 has to equal 3. Now this is just a grade 9 question. And yeah, this is what's going to happen. The hard part is getting the same base. Once you've done that, we start seeing math that we saw way back in grade 9. So we're just using our inverse operations in order to solve. Oops, should we divide both sides by 2? So the hard part is going to be finding that common base. And if you're comfortable with it already, it doesn't get much more difficult than what you've seen already. Um, don't want to do one with the factoring. So let's see how much time. Am I going to be able to get this all in one video is my question. And it looks like we might have a chance here. So what happens if you have something that looks a little bit out of place? So example four. What happens if I have Three multiplying to the x, and that's equal to 48. All right. We know the common base is going to have to be a 2 eventually, because that's where the x is. The x is on my 2. I have a 3 out front. First thing I ask myself, can I rewrite 3? So off to the side, this is what's going on in my crazy little head here. Can I write 3 as some base of 2? And hopefully most of you are thinking, ah, I don't think so. That's not possible. You're correct. So that tells me that this 3 cannot be converted to a base 2. If that's the case, there's only one option out there for us, and that's to get rid of the 3. How do I get rid of the 3 from the left side? Stick with what you know. 
how can you isolate 2 to the exponent x? Well, the only way I can get rid of it, the 3 is multiplying it, the inverse operation is to divide by 3. Whatever I do to one side, got to do to the other. So that would get rid of the 3 on that side, since it wasn't very nice to work with, leaving me with just 2 to the x. On the other side, 48 divided by 3, if you go through and do the division, it ends up being 16. All of a sudden, this is a nice question, because I know I can rewrite my 16 as a base 2. So 2 to the x equals 2 to the exponent. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So therefore, we want to compare our exponents, and we find that x equals 4. And that's our final answer. There's no more manipulation involved. All right. So a lot of the hard work is up front. I'm going to tell you there's going to be one question like this on the test for sure. So be aware, okay, and make sure you do some of the practice in there. Um, do I have enough to go through? Uh, I'm cutting it pretty tight. I'm going to take about two or three minutes in the next video just to finish up some of the really challenging ones, and then you're all set to go.